We've talked about the mole. We know that one mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those things. We talked about how do we count with inside a mole. If we had one car, it's got four wheels. One dozen cars has four dozen wheels. One mole of cars has four moles of wheels. We're going to be using those kind of concepts as we go forward through the calculations. But before we get there, we also have to know how much does a mole weigh? Does a mole of everything weigh the same? And the answer is no, because remember, moles are counting things, just like saying a dozen of them, just like saying one of them. Do we expect one penny to have the same weight as one chicken or the same weight as one car? No, right? We're like, the car is heavier. One car weighs more than one penny. How about if we had a dozen? If we had a dozen pennies and a dozen cars, does that change anything about how heavy they are compared to one another? And the answer is no, the cars are still a whole lot heavier than those pennies. So a dozen pennies is lighter than a dozen cars. So guess what? When we're talking about a mole of something, and a mole is just another way of counting, just like counting by ones and counting by dozens. When we have a mole of pennies or a mole of cars, guess what? The mole of cars still weighs more. It doesn't change anything about our understanding of how these things work on an individual basis to talk about them in a collective of a mole, just like it doesn't change the behavior of an individual egg, how heavy it is, or anything like that, to talk about a dozen of them. All they are is just a way of avoiding having to write lots of scientific notation. So a mole weighs different things depending on what you're doing. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at atoms and molecules that we are using in our chemistry to do things. So let's start with atoms. How much does a mole of hydrogen weigh? If we just have hydrogen atoms, we have one mole of hydrogen, how much does that weigh? Well, it's not going to weigh a whole lot, right? These atoms are really, really tiny. But a mole of them, and 6 times 10 to the 23rd, that's a whole lot of things. So even adding things up that are pretty tiny is going to add up to quite a lot. right? The average hydrogen atom has one proton and one neutron, so it's going to be fairly light. But long story short, what do we do? We walk over to our periodic table, and there we've got hydrogen's elemental symbol. It's got the 1 on top. And then below it, it's got this number, which is 1.01, .01, depending on the periodic table. Some show a few more digits, but we're going to talk about 1.01. .01. So I drew that one over here on my screen. And what is it? We learned this top number was what we called the atomic number, right? It was literally counting the number of protons. There's one proton in hydrogen. This bottom number, what did we learn about it? We said this was its mass in AMU. We said that the mass of hydrogen was 1.01 .01 AMU. And that's for one hydrogen atom. Well, how about if we had one mole of them, what would it weigh? Well, if we had one mole of them, it would weigh 1.01 .01 AMU times 6 times 10 to the 23rd. That would be a fairly large number. But it turns out it's even simpler than that. This 1.01 .01 is not only the mass in AMU. It is the mass in grams of one mole. So that's the mass in grams of one mole of hydrogen. So we have that one mole of hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen that we get directly from the periodic table. Now, most often people don't write it as the equality. They write it as the fractional unit. And they say that the atomic mass and some people will still use atomic weight. In fact, you'll even hear me use that because I learned atomic weight when I was uh, a, a budding chemist. But it turns out atomic mass is more precise because a mass is grams and kilograms. A weight is things like pounds. So atomic mass is 1.01 .01 grams per mole for hydrogen. And we could even be a little more specific and we say it's grams of hydrogen per mole of hydrogen. But that's most often what we see is 1.01 .01 grams per mole. So let's go to a different element on the periodic table. Let's go to oxygen. 
Go ahead to your periodic table that hopefully you've got in front of you and find oxygen, it's number eight. And below it, you're gonna see 16.00. What does that tell us? That tells us that one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams, or the atomic mass of oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. So cool, the periodic table actually tells us something about the mole, which is really neat if you think about it, because it's this mole thing we just kind of seem to make it up from somewhere, but it's actually related to those numbers that are back on the periodic table. What it is, is it's the mass of one mole of that element in grams. So how often do we do chemistry with single atoms? Well, not really often, right? We do chemistry with molecules. We react sodium carbonate with uh, sodium bicarbonate with vinegar in order to get other reactions and get, make those volcano reactions that you do. Both of those are molecules. They're combinations of atoms put together to make molecules. And how are we going to figure out masses of those? Well, it turns out that it's not that difficult to do because if we want to know how much a bicycle weighs, we could go out and we could actually measure the mass of a bicycle, right? And be like, hey, the, the bicycle, you know, it's got a mass of... Uh, I'm just going to make a number, 3.0 kilograms, right? a very light bicycle, 3.0 kilograms. Or what we could do is if we didn't have an assembled bike, we could have, well, each wheel weighs 0.5 kilograms, and there's two of them, and then we could measure the mass of the frame, which is 2.0 kilograms, and be like, if we add those up, we get the mass of a bicycle, which is 3.0 kilograms. Well, it turns out that's exactly what we do for water molecules. In fact, for all molecules. But what's water? Water specifically is H2O. What does that mean? There's two hydrogens and an oxygen. And just like we did above, when we just added up the masses of each part of the bicycle to find the mass of the bicycle, we do the same thing for molecules. We're going to add the atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01 .01 grams per mole. The atomic mass of the second hydrogen, which is 1.01 .01 grams per mole and the atomic mass of the oxygen, which is 16.00 grams per mole, to find out that no longer the atomic mass, but the molecular mass, again, often called molecular weight, is 18.02 grams per mole for water. So what do we do? We just add up the parts to find the total, just like we would if we were adding up parts in the real world. And so we get the molar mass or molecular mass, and I should write that one down. People also call it the molar mass, though they're kind of synonymous. The molar mass and molecular mass of water is 18.02 grams per mole. And we can do that for any molecule. You want to do it for a molecule that's got 40 different atoms in it and all connected together, and eight of these, and 12 of these, and 500 of these. You can do it. You just multiply each one out. Uh, if I wanted to find the mass of C6H6O, what would I do? Well, I'd take the atomic mass of carbon and multiply it by 6. I'd take the atomic mass of hydrogen and multiply it by 6. And I'd take the atomic mass of oxygen and multiply it by 1, because we only have one of them. Right? So what is the atomic mass of carbon? It's 12.01 grams per mole. For hydrogen, it's 1.01 .01 grams per mole. And for oxygen, it's 16.00 grams per mole. And again, I just got those straight from the periodic table. I didn't have to figure anything out. I didn't have to do any calculations on those. Now we just get on our handy dandy calculator and add those up. I can just do that 12.01 .01 times 6 plus 1.01 .01 times 6 plus 16.00. And I get 94. 12 grams per mole as my molar mass of C6H6O. So any molecule you want, you just add up the parts, and normally we just multiply by the total instead of adding each individual one. In our example above, we added a hydrogen and then a hydrogen. It's much easier just to say hydrogen's mass times two. So. Here's your turn. What's the molar mass of CH3F? So take a moment, try to come up with the answer for that one. Okay, we're back. 
C, you look it up, 12.01 grams per mole. H, you look it up, 1.01 grams per mole. Fluorine, you look it up, 19.00 grams per mole. You add that up, just like that. What did we forget? You're right. Good job. We forgot the times three here, right? We have three hydrogen atoms, so when we do our molar mass, we need to multiply that hydrogen by three. So we get 12 plus three plus 19 is, my brain just froze, 12 plus three plus 19, 15, 25, 35, 34, 0 0.04 grams per mole. And so we got B over here. Now here's your turn again. What is the mass of one mole of calcium bromide? And again, I actually really encourage you to pause the video, take the two minutes that it takes to do this, and then see if you get the right answer. Alrighty. Hopefully, you didn't just be like, well, calcium bromide is CABR. Because what do we have? We have a metal and a non-metal. We have an ionic compound, which means we always need to figure out what are my charges. Calcium, two plus. It is an alkaline earth metal. Bromine, what is it? An halogen, and so it's got seven valence electrons and would like to have eight. And it is Br minus. How do I combine those two? CABr2. So what do I need to do? I need to find the molar mass of calcium, which is 40.08 grams per mole, and add it to the molar mass of bromine with a two, because we have two bromines times 79.90 grams per mole, and then just simply add that up. 40 plus two times 70, 40.08 plus two times 79.90, and I get 199.88. Now you might be asking, where in that answer is the unit's grams per mole? Well, if you look, I said, what is the mass of one mole? The unit gram per mole tells me that's how many grams are in one mole. And so I was a little bit tricky there on purpose, just to try to get you to realize that we can use these units to say that one mole does actually weigh 199.88 grams. So now we know how to find the molar mass, the molecular weight, the molar mass, or the molecular mass of molecules. And uh, we're going to use that quite a lot going forward when we start to talk about chemical reactions. So that's what's coming up. Thank you.